Good morning everybody, it's uh, been a while since I've posted on Facebook, uh, sorry on uh, YouTube. Uh, I've been a bit, a bit busy doing other stuff. I uh, just got back from, uh, from America, a family trip to America. And uh, I'm a bit jet lagged so it is a good morning because it's now 5.30 in the morning. Well, been at it a couple of hours. Uh, might, might as well make use of the jet lag as worry about it. I'm just throwing some largish bowls here. Um, I've been searching for a while for some clay that mimics the Japanese open bodied uh, clay that gives really good sort of pinholing and crawling on on um, on, on pots on a chino glaze and I think I've found it here this is this is not nice to throw <laughs> uh, because it's uh, pizza oven clay so you shouldn't be throwing pots with it you should be making pizza ovens out of it but it gives a really nice open body morning George it's the cat it gives a really nice open body and um, when you glaze the pots it gives a really nice sort of pinhole and I suppose it's it's everything that um, Stoke-on-Trent industrialized pottery in Stoke-on-Trent have spent two or three hundred years trying to get rid of the crawling and the open bodied and uh, the rough textures they've been trying to get rid of it and uh, I'm sort of embracing it really so that's quite funny so this is giving me something, some kind of um, uh, some nice effects with the glazes that I've been using, but it's not nice to throw. It's like trying to throw with the mortar that you would use to build houses. So I've been working up to bigger and bigger pots, starting with tea balls, and it's just a question of getting used to the medium, I suppose. Take your time. Don't overdo it. Concentrate on what you're trying to do. Never stop learning. I once saw John Britt as a spoof video throwing with uh, cream cheese. It looked just like porcelain and then he ate a chunk of it which was really funny. A couple of years ago. So I thought if he can throw with cream cheese I can throw this uh, unhelpful clay. It has a te it, when it's like this, when it's fairly vertical, it's not bad. But it has no sort of um, you know, tensile strength. It hasn't. It doesn't like to hold. Can't hold itself up. It doesn't like wide forms. It tends to sag and drop. I couldn't throw. A I couldn't throw a. A moon jar out of this clay, not without leaving masses of clay in the bottom of it to turn away afterwards. Um, so I'm just trying to get it as thin as I can now without fear of it dropping. But if I go a bit quiet, it's because I'm concentrating. You also have to concentrate on compressing the rim. I don't normally use a, um, a leather, chamois leather to do a rim. I use the the, um, the webbing in my fingers normally because this tends to get lost in the slip and then it ends up going through the pug mill and you've got strands of chamois leather in the throwing and it's usually in the, in the middle of a nice big pot that you want to keep, but uh, if I don't chamois leather this rim, it'll crack and split. I'll just pay a bit of con concentrate a little bit on compressing the rim more than I normally would. Okay, now I need to use a 
the rib I use for moon jars, the inside of moon jars, it's just a, a small back cut in half. And this is to give it a nice curve to the bowl. I'm still throwing it with these fingers outside here. I used to, I can be a little bit well, I've seen me throw before. I'll be a bit of uh, a bit robust with my throwing. I've had to sort of re re reteach myself a little bit to cope with this clay and be a little bit more delicate with it, a little bit more respectful of the fact that it doesn't want to be thrown. But I do like a challenge. Just getting the inside of this getting the inside of this bowl nice and the curve nice. As people have diff with the transition from the base up into the up into the uh, the bowl, you get like an uh, uh, an angle, a, a step, and it's difficult with beginners to get rid of that. But if you just concentrate on the point at which the clay comes out of the base into the body, and just pay a bit of attention to that. What I'm doing is rather than going in at an angle like that, I'm, I'm angling it so it makes the arc shallower. So I, even with a even with a sharp curved hemisphere like that, if you arc it when you're throwing, you get a, a shallower um, curve, so it's all to do with how you angle the, the, uh, the rib. You can use it almost flat to give a really shallow rim, a really shallow uh, arc. So it's just knowing your tools. My right hand is supporting this the body of this because I can feel it wanting to go, it wants to sag and drop. But if I don't get the inside of this bit just right, the effect of the glaze, when I put the glaze on it, the effect won't be as nice. So we have to think, for beginners who are watching, uh, you have to think of past glaze results when you're throwing the next lot of pots. How did that glaze sit on that edge? Did it did it pool? Did it move to one area? Did it have an, a dent in it where, where stuff drops? You know, you have to be aware of what um, of what's gone on before, really, and that affects the next thing that you throw. That's why it's always good, I think, to um, live with a pot for a while. I don't agree with well. To try not to take pots out of the kiln and then sell them straight away. I like to leave with them for a week or two, have them around me so you can absorb all the little idiosyncrasies of them. And then that affects the next thing that you do. Well, I find that anyway. Right. That's about it. A large bowl made from pizza oven clay that doesn't want to be thrown <laughs> where there's a will just cut it off now I've left it fairly chunky in the base here so I can lift it off turn that away later it gives a quite nice effect this when I turn it I shall turn the outside right to the edge and take the edge take the skim the top off it and it opens all the pores, all the sort of, opens all the grain of it even more and gives an even better uh, crawling effect and uh, hopefully if I remember I'll show you, lost my wire, I will just lift this off onto a board and make another one.